Greetings, everybody. Today we're going to look at another aspect of radiative greenhouse effect argumentation, where people say that absorption spectra are proof of the greenhouse effect, the radiative greenhouse effect at the basis of climate alarm and climate science. So let's have a look at that. So absorption spectra and the radiative greenhouse effect. So it's a funny situation. Because uh, it's funny how people react to this, how people re respond to this. It, it's so strange. Because even after the radiative greenhouse effect is proven to be derived upon flat Earth physics. I mean, that's been shown. You look at the previous couple presentations, I've shown that. Look at the main presentation, if this is new to you. The radiative greenhouse effect, and therefore climate alarm, and even most of the field of climate science is literally based on flat Earth physics. That's how bad this situation is. So even after the radiative greenhouse effect mechanism is proven to violate the laws of thermodynamics, and even after the radiative greenhouse effect mechanism is proven to be based on sophistry and non-existent concepts in thermodynamics, in other words, that on the most basic theoretical principles of physics, the radiative greenhouse effect can be disproven and debunked. Even once you do that and show that to people, they say they still say, this, for example, but, 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 but the terrestrial absorption spectrum proves the rate of greenhouse effect. Really? You really think that it does? Okay, so what's more likely? Is it more likely that the theoretical fundamentals of thermodynamics, astrophysics, and geophysics are incorrect? Or that your personal, particular interpretation of what an absorption spectrum is and shows is incorrect? I mean, really, is the Earth flat or is it round? I mean, is geophysics and astrophysics, right or wrong, on, on the spherical Earth and spherical stars and things like that. I mean, really, people. Does heat flow from cold to hot? I mean, is the fundamentals of thermodynamics wrong on that? Is heat a conserved quantity? I don't think so. Probably what's wrong is your interpretation of what an absorption spectrum is. And we've seen that these people aren't very good at interpreting physics. If you go back to the main presentation, the hour and 10 minute one, I give some quotes from these people. I mean, Gavin Schmidt, he doesn't understand what an adiabatic process is. He totally misinterprets it. Robert Brown, another physicist, he doesn't even, he doesn't understand what the heat flow equation is and how to interpret it. He has no clue what it means whatsoever. Roy Spencer, uh, doesn't understand how a thermal blanket works and how heat flow works and what's a conserved quantity and all this stuff. So no, th these people's interpretations are what's wrong, most assuredly. So what is an absorption spectrum? In words, it's a spectrum of light created when a continuous light spectrum passes through a frequency selective absorptive gas. Now this is all high science. And if you're coming to this presentation not having much of a science background, this is all just gibberish to you anyway. For those people, do you believe in flat earth physics or do you believe in round earth physics? If you if you want to go with flat earth physics, then go with climate alarm, right? Honestly, if you're going to be a climate alarmist, then you have to go with the earth being flat because that's what it's based on, flat earth physics, right? So for lay people who have no clue of the science whatsoever, make your choice, flat earth physics or round earth physics. Flat Earth physics is climate alarmism, and it's what climate alarmism is based on. Round Earth physics is skepticism, and climate alarm skepticism, and rationalism. So make your choice. So, anyway, we've all seen what happens in grade school. People have seen this. Most people have seen this. Perhaps at home you have a prism. You shine white light through a prism, and you get a rainbow that shines on a wall, right? So what's happening? You have light coming in. So let's just say that there's a white light source. It's just what's called the continuous light source. That's a term we use in physics. Continuous light source goes through a prism or spectrograph or something, and the light gets broken up into its individual frequencies. And that's what makes a rainbow. So a continuous spectrum is when you just have pure light and there's nothing going on with it. And you have red all the way up through blue. That's your rainbow. Everyone, a lot of people understand this. So an absorption spectrum occurs when you have some, usually typically a gas, say in the beam of the light here. So there's some sort of gas there. And this gas absorbs and scatters 
certain frequencies of light just because of certain physical properties of the electron shells around the molecules or atoms in the gas. So it effectively removes one of these frequencies of light. So for example, consider this yellow band here is this yellow band. So that band gets removed or this frequency gets removed by the gas because the gas absorbs it here and it scatters it away. And then so it leaves, therefore, a dark band in the spectrum, a dark spot. Where there should be light, there isn't, because the gas that this light is passing through is absorbing some of this light and reflecting it away and scattering it away. So that's what creates an absorption spectrum. Typically, it's a cool gas in front of a warm source of light back here, and this gas absorbs and scatters some of the light and if you were to then look at that light as a spectrum you would see that some of the light is missing. So now in astronomy and astrophysics probably 95 percent of what we do connects up with the study of absorption spectra in some form or another. I mean you, you really cannot emphasize strongly enough how important spectra, absorption spectra, are in astronomy and astrophysics and physics too. It's the discovery of spectra is one of the biggest discoveries in terms of uh, in terms of the richness of the research which was then allowed from that discovery. It's probably the richest single discovery of all of all time for just expanding science and creating new ways to analyze and look at things and look at matter and study matter. Spectra can't be, it's probably the biggest thing in, in, in the history of science. One of the biggest things. I spent three years during my undergrad doing nothing but recording the spectra of hundreds and hundreds of different stars. That's all I did for three years straight. And with spectra you can do all sorts of things. You can tell properties of the star, all sorts of properties of the star. I mean, you, you have no idea how deeply you can go, and it would be concepts that even most other scientists wouldn't understand. Things that you can understand about the internal structure of a star just by looking at its spectra, and by doing Fourier transforms on its spectra, even. There's so many things that you can tell, and spectra are used for even detecting other planets around other other stars. They're, they're a big deal. They're a big deal. We've been studying them for 150 years. I mean, for example, consider that we never really knew what the sun was made out of. You know that? Up to up to like 150 years ago, we didn't know what the sun was made out of. Like, it, this, that's pretty recent, really, like in terms of human history. Only about 150 years ago, we didn't know what the sun was made out of. But the discovery of spectra allowed us to figure out what the sun was made out of. I mean, isn't that amazing? So it's a big deal. And the point of all that is that we have never, ever, never, ever called absorption spectra greenhouse effects. Never. It has never happened in astronomy and astrophysics and physics. It has never happened. We have never, ever, 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 we have never, ever called an absorption spectra in the 150 years we've been studying them. We have never, ever called them a greenhouse effect. Never. The only time that absorption spectra have now been called greenhouse effects is in the last five to ten years by climate alarmists. By climate alarmists who, in, as in the first presentation we've proven, have no idea how, how to interpret physics, are extremely poor physicists, have no idea of the fundamentals of thermodynamics, have no idea how to interpret thermodynamics or use it. No clue. These are the people who are now calling absorption spectra greenhouse effects. So an absorption spectrum. So here's an example, for example, and people will have examples like this on the internet that you see, um, YouTube videos. So there'll be a candle flame emits lots of infrared light. And if you look at it with a thermal camera, it looks pretty much just like this. Then that light is shone through or but between the the imaging thermal camera and the candle is placed a tube of 100 percent carbon dioxide for example and then when you look at it at the light through this tube of 100 percent carbon dioxide gas 
you get something that looks like this. Some of the light has been scattered out, which means that some of the, some of the infrared light has been absorbed inside the tube of carbon dioxide gas. The light has been absorbed there and, re and scattered out. So now the light is no longer traveling straight to where the, the thermal imaging camera would be over here. So the candle flame looks darker. Some light is removed. So it'll look something like that. So that's an absorption spectrum. Light from a warm source is being absorbed in a cool gas. And that's basically it. That's an absorption spectrum. Now here's the rated of greenhouse effect in back radiation. Back radiation, or the rated of greenhouse effect is saying that radiation from the atmosphere, from the colder atmosphere, is going back to the earth, warmer Earth's surface and heating up or causing the Earth's surface to become warmer still. And as we discussed in the first presentation, the only way that could happen is if that light transferred as heat. But it can't transfer as heat because heat only transfers from hot to cold. So this radiative greenhouse effect mechanics and derivation diagram, etc., has that back radiation from the atmosphere, colder atmosphere, makes the Earth's surface become warmer. So if you transfer that over here, it's saying that because of this gas that would be in this tube, if it was 100% carbon dioxide gas, is absorbing some of the light from here, it's making this candle get hotter. So because some of this light gets absorbed in this tube, that makes this light, this candle, burn hotter, burn brighter. So that's what the radiative greenhouse effect would say. Now, can that actually happen? Is that what's actually happening? An absorption spectrum, which is a cool gas being warmed by a high temperature light source, is not proof of back radiation heating the flame. An absorption spectra is simply this gas being warmed and absorbing some of the light from a brighter source, from a warm source. That's all that's happening. The gas in here warms up. That's not proof of back radiation heating the flame. Why doesn't this flame burn brighter? Or why, why if you put it beside a mirror, doesn't it burn brighter and hotter? That's not what happens. We know that the gas being warmed by the flame does not heat the flame. It would violate the laws of thermodynamics if it did. How would it do that? So this gas that's in this tube would be absorbing some of the light from here. And then that light is said to go back as back radiation to the flame and heat up the flame. Okay, well, how could it do that? In thermodynamics, how do you increase something's temperature? Either with work or with heat. Work is generally a mechanical process. There's no mechanical process happening here, so write that one out. So then you have to say as heat. Heat is the only way in the scenario to increase an object's temperature. So can the light that's being absorbed in here go back and transfer as heat to the flame? No, it can't because it's coming now from a cooler source or at most an equal temperature source. And even if it's equal temperature to the flame inside this tube, whatever radiation is here still cannot transfer as heat back to the flame. Therefore, it cannot warm the flame. So an absorption spectrum is not the greenhouse effect. It does not prove the radiative greenhouse effect. They're not the same thing at all. So summary, absorption spectra do not mean that back radiation exists in the function implied by the greenhouse effect. Now I didn't discuss that term back radiation in the main presentation very much. I did it in the second video. Actually, I didn't discuss it in the first presentation at all. And I've only discussed it in the second video. So back radiation is equivalent to back conduction, back diffusion, or back convection. Now think of that, back convection. Convection is when wind is blowing over your body and taking heat away. Now does that wind, as it's blowing away, blow back to you as heat, with heat? I mean, think of it, that's such a stupid idea. It's such a dumb idea. So the wind is blowing across your body and taking heat away from your skin and blowing away but there's back convection where that wind that's blowing away is somehow coming back 
and bringing heat back and making you hotter, even though the only heat it could have taken away was the temperature of your skin. And so it could come back at equal temperature only and therefore not warm you because it's the equal temperature. And equal temperatures aren't going to warm you, but they're saying that it comes back and makes you hotter. So wind blowing away from you, taking heat out of you, comes back and makes you hotter. I mean, stand outside in a snow blizzard and try that. Go stand outside naked in a snow blizzard and wait for back convection to heat you up. I mean, that's, that's the same thing as back radiation or back induction and back diffusion. It's the stupidest idea that's ever been created in physics. One of the dumbest, and it never needed to be. Invented by these climate alarmists. Absorption spectra do not mean that heat flows from cold to hot. Heat does not flow back from the cold gas, cooler gas, back to the warmer flame and make the flame hotter. And absorption spectra do not mean that the source of light or heat, the flame for example, emit less, emits less energy. Just because the gas might be absorbing some of the light downstream does not mean suddenly that the source of the light is emitting less energy. No, its energy is just being absorbed somewhere else. That doesn't mean that the source itself is emitting less energy. Absorption spectra do not justify flat earth physics. I mean, really, people, it's flat earth physics. And you want to say, but, 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 but absorption spectra prove flat earth physics. That's what you're saying. No, they don't. I'm sorry, they don't. Absorption spectra do not overturn the laws of thermodynamics. Absorption spectra do disprove the radiative greenhouse effect.